If studying in Switzerland is something you're looking at, then ETH Zurich should be your top choice. Why? Well, there's a long list, but let me give you a few reasons. The university has produced 20 plus Nobel Prize winners and has a long list of alumni who have excelled in their fields, such as none other than Albert Einstein. It is ranked 7th globally by QS and 11th by Time Higher Education, 1st in Switzerland, 4th in Europe and amongst top 10 in the world for many subject areas including engineering, architecture and natural sciences. Hi, my name is Sakir and if you want to study at this top university in Switzerland, stick until the end as you're also joined by Bedanath Kundu, a CS master student at ETH to help you with your application. Also, I'm dropping the link to Bedanath's winning SOP in the pinned comments and the description box below that help him secure his place. You can use this SOP as an inspiration to draft yours for ETH or any other Swiss university. So let's get started and get to know Bedanath a bit better. My undergrad was in Manipal. Uh, I did a master, sorry, bachelor's in computer science in Manipal and uh, then during my final year uh, for my thesis, uh, I went to CERN, which is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. And there I was working with uh, programming languages, like basically trying to run programs between, uh, like across programming languages. And there I felt like I needed some master's uh, background because a lot of people there were like very highly qualified and I felt a bit lacking in my studies. So that's why I decided to apply to ETH uh, MSCS. Let's start with question one. What programs can you study? So you can largely study five subject domains, which include architecture and civil engineering, natural sciences and mathematics, engineering sciences, management and social sciences, and system-oriented natural sciences. Some specific subject areas include architecture, civil engineering, environmental engineering, geomatics, agricultural sciences, earth sciences, environmental sciences, food sciences, computer sciences, cybersecurity, data sciences, mechanical engineering, biotechnology, biomedical sciences, chemistry, pharmacy, biology, comparative and international studies, and management and technology. All in all, there are around 70 to 80 programs available. At UG level, most programs are in German, but at PG, most programs will be in English. I'm dropping the course catalog in the description box below. Like I mentioned earlier, ETH is highly reputed and is rated as one of the best universities in the world. Let's hear from Bedinath that why he chose to study here. In systems, ETH is, uh, I think, in top five and overall in computer science it's also in uh, at least in top 10 if not in top five and during my masters uh, like when i was applying for masters i was looking for top universities obviously and uh, yeah i mean i was already in europe so european universities seemed like a better match for me but i also applied to a lot of us universities first of all like uh, european universities at the cost here is much lower than what it is in the US and that was a big factor for me uh, but otherwise um, I mean there is a, a professor here called uh, Torsten Hofler uh, who is very good at systems and I really wanted to uh, study uh, under him and work with him so that was also a very big motivation for me to apply to ETH. Question number two, what are the entry requirements and documentation? So for UG, you will need to have your 12 grade scores. Also, you will need a certificate of university admission in the desired academic subject provided by a recognized Indian university plus an entrance examination conducted by ETH. I'm putting the details of the entrance test in the description box below. A German language certificate is also mandatory. For PG, you will need a minimum three years bachelor's degree from a recognized university. German language certificate if the program is in German or IELTS 7 with 6 in each or 100 in TOEFL if English. CV, passport, declaration of consent, recommendation letters and SOP are also required in addition to program specific documents such as some courses may require you to submit your bachelor's course content, GRE scores or even portfolio. Links to all that I've discussed with respect to entry requirements are in the description box below. Bedanath throw some more light on the documentation he furnished during his application. Let's hear from him. First of all, you need to, if you are from India, you need to give uh, GRE and uh, some sort of English uh, language test and they require uh, CEPHER C1 level of English. 
uh, after that uh, once you have those you have to write a motivation letter which is uh, in EDH it's limited to one page at least while I was applying maybe it's changed now but uh, yeah that's that's where you have to basically say what all your like who all do you want to work with and what all um, attracts you to ETH and I think that's very standard for most uh, universities but usually the limit is much higher in ETH it's one page so I would recommend like being as precise as possible wherever you whatever you write uh, then uh, you need two recommendation letters uh, I think this is also something that's different from most universities but they require three uh, but in ETH you only require two of them and I don't think there is any requirement for them to be from an academic uh, institution like, for example I gave mine from uh, one was from CERN and one was from another organization which was also involved in physics. So, yeah, uh, these are mainly the documents that are required. Question number three, what does the overall process and timeline look like? So for UG students from India, you will need to plan at least 1.5 to 2 years in advance as ETH entrance exam is mandatory. Let's take an example here. If you're targeting September 2025 intake, you can apply between December 1st, 2023 and March 31st, 2024 only. That is almost 1.5 years before the course starts. Once you apply, you can register for the entrance test between 15 September 24 to 15 October 24. Entrance test will be held in January 25 and once you cleared, you can start September 2025. Do note that you will have to submit a German language test along with the application but for the school certificate, you will have time until August to submit. You have to submit proof of university admission in India by mid-October. Yes, it's a long process, so plan accordingly. You can take a screenshot of this easy-to-understand admissions flowchart for your reference. It's flashing on your screens right now. For masters, the process is thankfully simpler. You can apply between November 1st to December 15th each year for entry into September intake in the following year. The application window may change, so keep an eye on the university website. Once you submit the application, you will get to know the decision by April. The links to all this info are also in the description box. Also, don't forget to download Bedinath's winning SOP for ETH Zurich from the description and the pinned comments. I'm sure it will be of great help. Also, let's hear from him on his application timelines. Uh, so, uh, the application opens on 1st of November and it's till December 15th. At least that's what was during my time. It might um, differ a little bit, but that's the general window. And I got uh, the results uh, around 15th of March. Uh, and of course, this uh, application window doesn't involve the submission of recommendation letters, which I think they give 10 or 15 days more uh, for your professors or your supervisors to submit their recommendation letters. Question number four. What are the tuition fee, living costs, and are there any scholarships available? Well, the tuition fee for both foreign students and Swiss students is same, which is roughly around 800 Swiss francs or 74,000 rupees per semester. However, living in Switzerland can be expensive and I would recommend that you set aside 1200 to 1300 francs a month on an average, which is 1.15 lakhs roughly. University recommends 1800 francs in total as an ideal cost. I have added some links to all this info in the description box as well. Bedinath has some more details on tuition and living expenses. Let's hear from him. I would say tuition costs, uh, just the key tuition cost is around 700, but you pay around 800. Uh, so for my last semester, I paid around 814 CHF. Uh, and uh, this involves uh, a lot of things like you have the gym membership and um, the, there are these uh, student organization memberships and stuff. So th these are all included in that. Uh, and then the living cost is around 1200 CHF per month. This is including rent and also uh, insurance. Uh, I am I, not including any, like, any extra costs that come up. But yeah, this is like generally it's like 1200. So I think overall you can easily uh, like spend a year here under 15,000 uh, CHF, uh, excluding the semester costs of course. This is just for the living costs. 
In terms of scholarships, ETH is pretty generous and has a variety of scholarships available. ETH scholarships are offered to both UG and PG students, but you will have to complete a certain number of semesters before you can apply. The Excellence Scholarship or the ESOP is awarded to master's students only and covers tuition fee waiver plus 12,000 francs per semester living allowances. It opens between November 1st to November 30th each year. All the links are in the description. So that was for today's video. Let me know which other university you would like me to cover in the next video. And before you leave, don't forget to download Bedenath's winning SOP from the pinned comments and description. Thank you for watching and let us catch up in the next video.